Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. Today, we're going to talk about the most challenging rounds in Blunt's Tower Defense 6, and how you can prepare for them to ensure your victory. Let's jump right in. Before we dive into the specific rounds, let's talk about the early game. In the first 24 rounds, you'll want to focus on building a solid foundation for your defense. A great strategy is to start off with a hero, as they provide valuable support and abilities to help you handle the initial waves of balloons. In addition to your hero, another fantastic option is to include a 200 druid or a 302 boomerang monkey. These towers are effective at dealing with the early blunt types and will bolster your defense, setting you up for success in the rounds to come. Now, let's get into the specific rounds. Round 24 introduces the first camel balloons, which can be tricky if you're not prepared. But fear not, if you've started with a hero that has camel detection, like Quincy, this round will be a breeze. While there is only one camel balloon in this round, it is crucial to be prepared for impoppable or chimps mode. A great strategy is to use a ninja monkey. Alternatively, a spike factory can be a strong choice on longer maps. Keep in mind that you will need to upgrade these towers in later rounds, to ensure they continue to deal with camo balloons effectively until you get additional camo detection. Next up, we have round 28, which brings in the first lead balloons. If you've already set up a 200 druid or a 302 boomerang monkey, then you're all set, as both of these towers can handle lead balloons effectively. However, if you're looking for a good and cheap option to deal with this round, I recommend using a sniper monkey with a full metal jacket upgrade. This will allow you to easily pop those lead balloons and continue on your path to victory. Round 33 presents the challenge of camo balloons. To handle this, you should focus on units that can detect and pop camo balloons. If you have the resources, you can use a monkey village with a radar scanner upgrade to remove the camo properties from the balloons, making them easier to pop. However, if camo detection is too expensive for you at this point, a good alternative is to upgrade your Ninja Monkey to 201. This should provide you with the necessary firepower to handle the camo balloons in this round. Moving on to round 40, we meet our first Moab, or Massive Ornery Air Blimp. A tower with high single target damage, such as a Sniper Monkey with the Deadly Precision Upgrade, or a 204 Ninja Monkey, which excels in Moab damage, will be crucial to take down the Moab. Additionally, a 400 Alchemist can significantly boost your main tower's damage, greatly aiding in your victory. But don't forget about the blunts that come after the Moab is popped. Consider having monkeys that can fire globally or clear blunts at the end of the track, such as an upgraded Spike Factory or a 230 Druid. Another excellent option is to use a 203 Heli Pilot to push the Moab away, giving you more time to deal with it and the blunts that follow. After securing your victory in round 40, you'll want to start preparing for the upcoming rounds, and camo blunts will be one of your primary concerns. Getting camo detection as quickly as possible is essential. If you're low on cash but have access to water, a great option is to get a 300 submarine. This can later be upgraded to a 402, which deals significant damage. If you don't have access to water and are relying on primary monkeys as your primary damage dealers, consider getting a 020 village. This can later be upgraded to a 420, giving your primary monkeys an incredible range boost. Another option for camo detection is the 003 wizard, but I find him to be somewhat RNG based since he can sometimes miss fast moving camo balloons. In round 49, we face a huge rush of balloons. A great strategy for this round is to use a 402 boomerang monkey or a tower with splash damage like a wizard monkey with the dragon's breath upgrade. Round 60 introduces the BFB, or brutal floating behemoth. For this round, a great option is to use a super monkey upgraded to 230, as its high single target damage will help you take down the BFB efficiently. Other excellent choices include a 402 heli pilot or a 203 monkey ace, both of which are fantastic at dealing with Moab class balloons and will be valuable assets in securing your victory. Next up, we have round 63 which is known for its large groups of ceramic balloons and is often considered one of the hardest rounds in the game. 
So, it's important to be cautious and prepare your defenses accordingly. To handle this round, I recommend using a bomb shooter with the cluster bombs and recursive cluster upgrades, or a tower with strong area damage like a super monkey upgraded to 230. Another excellent option is a 420 glue gunner, which can slow down and damage all the ceramic blunts, making them much easier to handle. Round 76 brings us another challenging round with large groups of regrow ceramics. A great strategy for this round is to use a tower with splash damage like a bomb shooter with the recursive cluster upgrade. Another excellent option is a glaive lord boomerang monkey, as its glaives can hit multiple blends at once, dealing with the regrow properties efficiently. Moving on to round 80, we face our first COMG or Zeppelin of Mighty Gargantuanus. For this round, I recommend using a tower with high single target damage like a Super Monkey upgraded to 230, which excels at dealing with high health blunts. Another excellent option for strong Moab damage is a Moab Mauler with a Moab Eliminator upgrade. By this point in the game, you should have at least one fifth tier tower. A 502 Boomerang Monkey is an excellent choice for dealing with Zombs, thanks to its powerful Glaive attacks. Additionally, Having strong global towers such as a 204 or 402 heli pilot will make this round significantly easier to handle. In round 90, we face the challenging DDTs, or Dark Dirigible Titans. These blends can be tough to handle due to their high speed and camo properties. To deal with them effectively, consider using primary towers like the 502 Tax Shooter, 205 Ice Monkey, or 502 Boomerang for their high damage output. However, remember that these towers don't have camo detection on their own, so you'll need to pair them with a Monkey Village for both additional power and camo detection. I particularly like these towers because they are primary towers and can be significantly buffed with the Monkey Village. Even the 320 upgrade will make a noticeable difference. But if you have the cash to spare, I highly recommend going for the 520 upgrade for maximum effectiveness. Rounds 91 to 100 are a formidable challenge featuring DDTs, Zoms, and other tough blends. To conquer these rounds, focus on upgrading your existing towers and consider adding more powerful 5th tier monkeys. With a steady cash flow, Investing in additional 5th tier monkeys is key to enhancing your defenses and overcoming these formidable challenges. Finally, we have round 100, which brings us the big airship of doom, or bad. When dealing with the bad, it's a good strategy to position your towers not right at the beginning of the track, unless you want to rely solely on brute force to pop the bad instantly. Once the bad is popped, three fast EDTs will emerge from it. So having global towers like a 502 Monkey Ace or a 205 Heli Pilot can be very effective. Additionally, consider placing a 420 or 204 Spike Factory at the end of the track to help deal with any remaining blunts. And that's it. I hope this guide helps you tackle these challenging rounds and secure your victory. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. See ya.